Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I am your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews and on-site training. Now, if you've been following along in this series, I have taken my old C++ 98 code, which is actually pre-C++ 98 from 1997, that I worked on when I was in university, which is an infix math expression evaluator. And I have taken that code and made it quote more modern 98 code and that was in the restoring c 98 code episode and i had a really good starting point after doing that as i moved from 98 to 11 to 14 to 17 to 20 and by the time we reached c 20 we had made a compile time const expert math expression evaluator which took very little effort mostly just took putting the things in the header files and making them const expert. So there's the downside that I put things in header files, but there's the upside that I can do things like this and have a compile time expression evaluator where I can evaluate any infix math expression that I choose to evaluate. Now, this is definitely a somewhat limited expression library tool thingy. Um, it can only do the four basic math operations and can't even have negative numbers, I don't think. I just realized that last night. We are now looking to say, what would we do as we move to C++ 23? And well, first of all, I'm pondering whether or not I should swap out their stack with the C++ library stack, which has existed since C++ 98, but it would have been a little bit of a change because their pop doesn't return the value that was popped and their peak is slightly different, which ours returns a const pointer to the object if there happens to be one. But I think the main thing that I want to do is deal with error handling as I move to C++ 23. And that's because we have a new tool for error handling. Now, right now, I just kind of blindly throw an exception, which is not bad. It prevents the project from having undefined behavior. So here in my stack library, if you call pop on an empty stack, then I throw an exception. There's no elements left to pop. And that's definitely something but it doesn't deal with the fact that I might have unparsed or unrecognized tokens. So in here, when I am parsing the tokens that I've pulled out, if I say, okay, this is a plus divide minus times open paren, close paren, and then otherwise I assume it's an integral. And that's not a great assumption, but I parse that and I can place it back into the set of numbers that have been parsed. And if it were an operation, then I do some amount of evaluation and push this thing into the set of operators that I need to parse and then I evaluate those. All of this code could be cleaned up a little bit, but it's really just not a very complicated project. Even the most complicated part of it is only 180 lines of code. And to be fair, this was a university project. All right, so I think what I want to do is this evaluate expression, which is given a string tokenizer and returns a rational number, is going to actually return a standard expected instead of a rational number. But I could have it throw an exception. It's really very much a design choice here. If you're not able to parse and evaluate the input string that you were given, should that be an exception or should it be a expected object failure? Either works. Uh, in the case of const expert, you're not allowed to throw an exception at compile time. Well, if you do, then you get a hard compile time error. So let's just go ahead and do that. That'd be fun to see. So this is clearly my error handling case right here. I say if numbers.peak does not equal null pointer. So I'm saying if I've done parsing all of the numbers, 
then I know that the top one on the stack is the result. Otherwise, something went wrong. Now I've lost what the original input expression was at this point. The string tokenizer has the entire original string and the current offset into it. Okay, this is actually good. Compiler thinks that not all control paths can return here, but it's wrong because throw error throws an error explicitly. Um, this is from the compiler itself. So uh, I'm not sure how to convince it that I have a lambda that is guaranteed to throw an exception. Yeah, so this throw error is absolutely guaranteed to throw an exception. That's all that it does. But the compiler still says that I could possibly reach the end of this function without returning a value, which is just flat out wrong. So that's an interesting question because there's a C attribute. It's one from C11 called no return, but C23 is the first one that allows us to actually put attributes on lambdas. I wonder what would happen if I specify that the lambda doesn't return. Ah, it's a C23 extension, and well, here we are. We're making use of C23. Well, now the compiler is no longer whining at me because it knows that I'm never going to return from the throw error. I think this might actually be a reasonable solution. We'll have to see if it works out. Yeah, <laughs> I've got to fix the minus operations. That clearly is wrong. Yeah, I didn't have a single test for those. Hmm. Let's see what happens if I try this. Okay, that really should have been an unparsed token of some sort. Ah, there we go. So we do get a little bit of our pretty print here where it says unable to evaluate the expression and has an unevaluated expression caret there, just as if we were a fancy compiler or something ourselves. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to have to put a little bit more error handling in this though. So my code assumes that if it's not an operator, then it must be a number. This should get our error handling much smarter. Yeah, <laughs> I really have to figure out the whole negatives thing. The whole subtraction thing here. All right, that still did not do anything reasonable. So it parsed up to the 23, and then it reached what? So if I have unevaluated operators, or any remaining tokens, but this loops while well, has more tokens, so that's not going to work. How am I possibly not getting an error when I have a type of token that I don't know how to process? So it reads all the white space, then it finds the end of the current token and it gets said substring, and it returns that. Oh, is white space is just if it's not a number and it's not an operator, literally everything else is ignored. See, that's just bad. Let's do this. All right, finally, I'm getting somewhere with this. Now, I still don't have subtraction working, but I do have a pretty printing error handling thing going on here. So we have enhanced error handling. 
Now, there are other things that we really should clean up, like this is a lot of code duplication. And in this code, we have a fair bit of code duplication for how we actually handle popping both of the operands off and doing something with them. Oh, that's interesting. So I am doing a unary minus here if I find a minus sign. And that explains why the subtraction isn't working. There's a distinct difference between a negative number and a minus sign here. I'm not entirely sure what the original intention of this code was. I would be inclined to just go ahead and implement minus the exact same way. And yeah, I'm doing a copy and paste right now, even though I say to never do that. Let's add some test. But notice again, since this is a compile time test, it told me immediately that this wouldn't evaluate to the correct number. 3 minus 2 should evaluate to 1. And with some grouping here, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 3 minus 2 is, again, 1. One downside to having used exceptions is that we cannot catch errors at compile time, but we can have the opposite of advantage that we can see the errors at compile time. So if I do this, then I'm going to see that I have a throw expression does not evaluate to a constant expression. So I know exactly where it failed, but I don't get a pretty message either. So it's an upside and a downside to this. But I'm going to leave this here now, I think, and we'll make some comments about C23 or not. So there's features from C23 that I would have absolutely wanted to use, but I couldn't because of lack of compiler and tooling support. We could have used standard expected. I chose not to. I chose to use exceptions. And this is very much a design decision on your side in your code, what makes the most sense for you. If I had used expected, then I probably would have had to have plumb expected through this whole thing. So perhaps a future episode would be moving from exceptions to expected, and we could see what the code looks like, where and how it differs when we do that. But that is not an episode for today. This is as far as we can get with C23. There's probably still more cleanups and simplifications that this code could handle, but otherwise we've got a fun little infix expression evaluator that runs at compile time and or runtime with a neat little text interface that gives us a little carrot to let us know where and how it couldn't parse our input. So I think we should be pretty proud of that. And thank you for watching this episode of C Weekly. Be sure to subscribe. Hope to catch you in the next episode.